Coding Challenge Intermediate, 14th of January. Question number one. Get the minimum value. So we have an array of numbers and we want to get the minimum value out of the array. So you, something you learn on the beginner is that you can do math.round one, two, three, and that will work, right? I will tell not not round, sorry, math dot min. And that will give us the minimum value, which clearly is one uh, return, right? We put it, it will work faster. Return math dot min one two three. Correct. But what's the problem now? We have an array. So, first of all, how many arguments do we have? One. One, of one. correct. Tell me the name of the argument, please. Numbers. Numbers. Right. And then what? Can we do that? Can we no, do I numbers? No, no. to use the spread. Number and the correct. Spread. That right. won't work. That's correct. That won't work, you see? And the reason why that won't work is because in reality, we are trying to do that. That doesn't work with uh, math.min, right? So what we need to do, we need to spread the array. In other words, we need to transform 1, 2, 3 into that. Because MathAdmin likes this structure, but it doesn't like it, right? So how do we spread? How we do this transformation here? Right. Correct. Rest operator, dot, dot, dot. Right, so with the dot dot dot, we transform an array into a comma separator list of values. That should be it, I believe. No, wrong. What's the problem? Numbers. Yeah. That's it. Right, any question? That was probably the easiest one, right? The intermediate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing is, this is either you know it or you don't know it. This is about the rest operator. Yeah. So if you've never seen that before, you'll see as soon as you start doing the training on the intermediate about rest operator. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool thing on modern JavaScript. So when we talk about rest operator, in reality, we'll do a workshop about that. But if you want to learn more, we can check our YouTube channel. We have some videos that have to talk about the REST operator. So the REST operator, in reality, is based on two principles. First of all, we have the spread operator. And then we have the gather operator. So here, is this a spread or gather? Spread, spread correct. Because we have one, one variable, and we spread it into several variables, right? We'll see, I'm sure we'll see the gather operator at some point as well, right? But for now, that's pretty much it. So, any questions? No? Okay, let's move to the next one. Mm. So, uh, I have a question. Yep. To what end? Why are we doing this? Yes. What's the point? Because I've come across these in, when I've done... Yep. Oh, What's the point of what? Of the rest operator? Yeah. The Simplicity. Sim no, 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 no. What, if you go back to the example, yep. you said you've got to load yeah, you were searching, you are looking for something, it's yep. on site, mm -hmm. and you need to spread it. Correct. Oh, I see. Yes. But, but is that you need to turn it out, stop it being an array? It cannot be an array, yeah, because ma yeah. math being doesn't work with arrays. Yeah, arrays. Yeah. Right. So, right. so if we do that, look, if we do math.mean one, two, three, what will this return? Uh, one, one. Correct. One, uh, return again, right? We return. return that, it returns one, right? Right, easy, right? But in reality, in the intermediate, what we have is that we don't have a list of numbers, we have an array. That's like one array. That's yeah. the problem, it's one array, one number, right? Not one number, one variable. Unfortunately, math.min doesn't play well with arrays. Look, that doesn't work. That will do nothing. So to solve the problem, if we add dot, 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 in front of the array, it will unwrap, yeah. right? It will transform an array of values into a comma separated list of values. And that will return one. Mm -hmm. So again? I'm a bit confused. It's about getting all the divisible numbers. No, it's no, 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 no. I was explaining the previous one. No, 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 no. Question number one. I'll, I'll go to question number two in a second. 
right? Before doing that, I would like to have a look to what you did on the in question number one, right? So, right, you, you can see the benefit of using uh, the uh, rest operator, for example. Look at Mo, he solved it easily in one line, right? Two characters. But then just he's, he's tried to do a few more complicated things. I'm sure there is a way to do that without using the rest operator. But mm -hmm. the thing is, you can see how simple this is, right? Yeah, mass of main, mass of main, blah blah blah, mass of main, all the stuff, right? This is so Poppy's approach is also valid. So she's creating a variable and then she returns the value of the variable. That's fine, right? Cool. Question number two: Get all the divisible values. So we have a number, and we want to analyze which are the divisible values of that number. You know what a divisible value is? Factor. Factor. Correct, correct, correct. So a number will be, sorry, let me rephrase that. 12 will be divisible by, by a number if the modulus of dividing 12 and that number is zero. In other words, in other words, why one is divisible, why one is, div is divisible number of 12? Because the modulus of 12 and one is zero why 2 is a divisible number of 12? because the modulus of 12 and 2 is 0 why 5 is not a divisible number of 12? because the modulus of 12 and 5 is? you mean there's a remainder? yeah, the remainder what's the remainder of 12 divided by 5? 2 2, two. two. correct, correct right. so there are, I'm sure there are multiple ways to do that multiple ways I'm going to follow a academic approach, which is probably not the most efficient one. But if you struggle to understand that, I hope that it will help you, right? So sometimes I try to look for an optimal approach. Sometimes I try to be a bit more verbose and, 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 and you know, and break, uh, try to break the problem into several steps, right? We, we, we see different approaches. So what I'm going to do, and then we'll see what you did, because I'm pretty sure you did something different, right? So. I'm going to create an, ar an array or oh, yeah, I, I create an array I'm going to keep that very very simple uh, and the name of the array will be divisible values because if the name of the function is get divisible values I create a variable called divisible values how do we initialize an array? The array is just uh, empty, empty square brackets, square brackets. Square brackets. Yeah. that's correct, that's correct, that's correct, right? so then I'll do something And eventually, I'll return these values. Is that correct? No. Right? That's the problem. Mm. So now, what I'm going to do here? Filter. For loop. Filter, for loops. I'll use a for loop. Yes. I'll use a for loop because to use filter, I'll need to create an array. And I don't have an array. I have just a number. Of course, I could create an array out of this number. Mm. But that will make everything else more complicated. Right? If you know how to do it, I'm sure someone has done that and that solution will look awesome. But if you don't know how to do it, mm. right, we'll see an alternative, a more lower level alternative to, to solve the problem. So how many arguments do we receive? One. One. Tell me the name of the argument. Values. Values. Numbers. Values, value, number, numbers. Wait, wait, it's plural. Not plural. It's not plural. It cannot be plural no, because no, we no. have one number, right? No. So you can call it value, you can value. call it number, value, value. Some, uh, in that case, call it array then. In that case, it's what? An array, array. It's not an array. No, that's wrong. That's 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 worst variable name possible. <laughs> because it's not an array. You don't have any array. You have a number. It's an integer. You see? Oh, yeah, yeah. Twelve. You cannot call it array. That's extremely confusing, right? So there is a there is a very popular uh, blog on the internet. I think it's on Medium, somewhere like that. You know that sometimes we tend to write the readable code, the scalable code, elegant for the thing, right? So there is one guy that uh, he talks about how to create unreadable code, right? Because mm -hmm. his his theory his theory is if you create good code, the thing is the company you're working for for them it will be very easy to replace you because your code is so elegant that everyone will be able to maintain it, right? And when you do these kind of things, no one will be able to understand that so you'll be, you know, in a very good position to stay in the company, right? <laughs> it, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously, the article is like, you know, 
it's, it's a bunch of jokes. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense because sometimes the, way, the best way to learn how to create good code is how to see bad code, right? How to write bad code. You learn how to write bad code, it's the same effect you learn how to write good code. Mm -hmm. So let's call it number. Right. So then, I'm going to use a for loop. Do you remember how to use classic for loops? Yeah, yeah. For what? Zero, okay. Uh, I less or less equal. Less and equal. Let's Lumber leave it. dot length. Lumber dot length. Yeah. I plus plus. And then what? Ah, so I mean I mean. So okay, Megan Megan complains about that. Why is not length? Yeah, that's correct. That doesn't make a sense, right? What's the number of length of 12? That's, that's a weird thing, right? I don't even know if that makes any sense. You cannot take the length of a number. So number is 12, that's what you want, right? Easier. So then, what? You want to add the current index to the array of divisible values if something, right? If the value, if the i is a divisible number of number. So if something, then let, let's, let's leave the condition to the end. Assu let's assume that i is a divisible number of number. How do we add i to the array of divisible values? Push. Push what? Push i. Like that? I think. Square bracket? No. Correct. Correct. That makes more sense, right? Array. We have an array of divisible values. So if the number is divisible, we'll add it to the array, right? And then, you, you see, I'm not following a chronological order. I, I keep doing that all the time, right? So first of all, I create a structure. If I create a variable, then I return the variable, because otherwise I may forget at the end, right? And I put a semicolon, right? I create a for loop. And then I put the if statement, and I add the element to array. And now I'll put the condition, because this is one of the most complicated parts. So how do we check if a number is divisible by another number? If number, number modulus, modulus, modulus one. one, right. Wait, that's the zero. 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 Triple, triple equals zero. Yeah. Number triple equals zero. No. 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 Number modulus i. Modulus means the remainder. Remind. The remainder. So if you divide three, you three divided by two, the result is one, and the remainder is one. Right? So something like that. On line five, you have to return. We have to return what? Where? Well, on line five. Line five. Do we have to return anything here? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Okay. No. Or no. the no. no. Where? Anyway. Here. Yes. Because it's not like it's not. Right. Will this work? Yes or no? I'll tell you what will happen, and this is why the tools are so useful. Mm. That line will probably never ever run. Never. If you play, if you have the return. On the, on the, on the yeah. Correct. Because, because of that. As soon as you have a return statement, uh -huh. the function will stop. Uh -huh. yeah. So we shouldn't put that here. That makes sense when you are when you're doing map. You know, reduce, get yes. there, find, all these things, right? But we don't have any of these things. We have a classic 90s for loop, right? This is the first thing you learn when we talk about loops in, in, the, in the university, right? right? So we cannot put that here. I mean, we can, but we will fail. We don't want to return anything. We just want to add a new value to the array of divisible values. So what do you think about that? Will this work, yes or no? Why? Looks pretty good, right? It won't work. So Megan is not that happy. Why, Megan? Uh, 
number plus one. That's interesting. Number plus one. Less than equal. That's a good point. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. It has to, it's a, uh, can't include zero. It's a number divisible by itself. Yes. 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 So what happened here? Yes. If yes. number is 12, yes. I will be zero, Frenov, yeah, blah, blah, bullshit. And eventually, I will be 11. Mm -hmm. So 11 is not a divisible number right. by 12. So it will go to the next one. I equals 12. <laughs> so if I equals 12, so is it, is it less than the Correct. Right. What happened? Is 12 less than 12? It's less, yes. So it should be 1. Yes. Oh, great. No. Is so 12 equal. less than 12? Uh, equals. Equals. Equal. equals. Right. We need to do that. Otherwise, yeah. you know what will happen? That number won't be, will never be returned, right? What for do you use? So the, it was, they were used in the 90s, pretty much. Because <laughs> <they were laughs> I, I'm serious. <laughs> It's also, yeah. until, until 2011, <laughs> that was the only way to look, mm. right? That is still valid, this is a good example. To, I like them, because to me this is, this is, this is very old, right? But still effective. Mm. All doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, so the, so the structure here is, you create a variable, first of all, whenever you do that, please do this. If you create a variable, put lead in front of it, otherwise you may get warning issues. You create the variable, and then you said, while the value of this i variable is lower or equal to that number, then do that. And after running this code, increment the value of the variable. Mm -hmm. So the first... What's what? The i plus plus. I plus plus is a source of I yeah. equals I plus one. Okay. So we, we add a new value, we increment by one, it's time we run the loop, right? First time I equals zero, we do stuff, at the end I equals one, we do stuff, then I equals two, and so on, right? So we can do that, or we can simply do that. This is not about JavaScript, this is, you know, a common practice in programming. That's why we got the C plus plus programming language, right? Will this work? Yeah. Any penalty? Um, no. no? Good? Are you sure? Oh, yeah, there's, okay. is there a space between? Where? On line 4. Space. Between uh, yeah. the curly bracket uh, yeah. and, and yeah. parentheses. One space, correct? Yeah. Okay. Should we try that? Mm. That's perfect. So I made a point about what if i equals zero? Mm -hmm. Then that number. Yeah. So that means that the first value of i is zero. Yeah. But then twelve divided by zero. zero. That's a, that's a good point. I wanted to mention that actually. Even though that's correct, to me that's a bit smelly. Why do we start i at zero, not one or any other value? Why zero? Because the but we don't care about the array, right? This is just to find the, uh, the divisible values of these numbers. Mm. We don't care about the arrays of these states. We just want to take all the numbers <coughs> from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 11. Mm. We want to go to check out of these numbers which ones are divisible, right? It's a, it's a counter, right? It's a counter. But you could just change it to one, and it's fine. Right. Oh, let me. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. Will it make any difference if we change from zero to one? No. No. That will still work. And to me, this is a slightly more elegant, because, because I'll show you. So what we are doing all the time is we divide. We're trying to get the modulus of twelve and one. 12 and 2, 12 and 3. The way to get the modulus is first divide dot 2, oh, sorry, second get modulus, right? To get the modulus, you need to, you need to divide first. What happens when we have 12 modulus 0? First, Divide. What happens when we divide 12 and 0? Divide by 0. It doesn't happen. 
right? So if we, generally speaking, if we divide 12 by 0, that, that, that we cannot do that, right? That will give us an infinite number. However, JavaScript is smart enough to detect that if we want to get the modulus of 12 and 0, it will avoid doing the, prop, the actual division, right? That's why it still works, still works, mm -hmm. still works. But to me, it's, it's unnecessary. Because you, even though uh, on top of this, this issue, from a performance point of view, we are doing one extra iteration, right? What's the point of putting zero if a number will be never divisible by zero, right? So let's keep it simple. Let's just divide sub by one, and then increment it two, then three, then four, then five. Right? But zero doesn't make any sense. Even though, again, it works. Any question? This what? Do while, you can do say do while, yes, I'm not going to do that now, but yes, of course. <coughs> On top of the for loop, there are other structures in JavaScript, mm -hmm. while, or even, as Megan mentioned, do while. Right? These are pretty exotic today, we, pretty much, we never use them. But yeah, if you, you want it, you can do it. Yeah? Uh, yeah? Yes, yeah, there is a there is a yes, there is a there is yes, yes, you can do that. I'm sure I, I'm not going to do that now because I'm sure someone I, I've seen this morning someone used yes. So I'd like to credit you, whoever did that. Well, right? what is this just roughly, don't like maybe don't do it. It's just a part of the field. So so the strategy will be to create an array. If you create an array here yeah. of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, ten, you know. If you have that already, yeah. then the only thing you need to do, if, that, if this is the variable, let's call it uh, numbers. Yeah. So now, the only thing we need to do, if we got that, is numbers.filter, number, or instead of numbers, let me call it values, yeah. values.filter, this is a value, so we'll do number, modulus, value, equals it, right? So this is way simpler. Two lines, right? But the point is how do we generate that? Yeah. How do we create this array? We can do that. We can definitely do that, right? We can definitely do that. And with the what? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean don't get me wrong. The only reason why I didn't do that is because I prefer you to understand that because this is the simplest approach. The classic, right? This is classic. Once you understand the classic, we can think about the, the modern way to do it. And how is the modern way to do it? Well, many things. So, for example, you see, so Natasha, I mean, most of you use the, the for loop, that's <laughs> fine, but look at Megan. Wow. Wow. Right? Wow. Yeah. So, Megan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Megan literally did. Uh, that, of that thing of creating the array dynamically, right? Uh, which is good, let me wrong, that's, that's a good thing, right? So, yeah. So that, that's a bit exotic, right? And, and now, I mean, that will be fine as far as, as far as Megan can explain us how she did that, right? Which probably she can because she copied that from the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And because of copying from the internet, she got a penalty on the focus, right? You know, so all these things. So this is a bit exotic, but th that's still, that's still, I'm not sure if I want to explain that to be honest. Is, so like, is this like modern way of? This is modern way, of course, yeah. because, because, yeah, yeah, because there's the rest operator. So, Megan, and I, I think there is, there is also a modern way to do that a bit simpler, mm -hmm. right? So we can go to that too, so we can prototype that if you want, right? So, let's go to that tools. So let's create a new snippet. So we want to find ways to, uh, you know, create arrays easily, right? So what Megan did is to uh, let's see, we display numbers. So if number equals twelve, right? You see? So that actually works. That creates an array of 12 numbers, right? Why? Because first of all, when we do that, uh, yes, 
that's, that's a bit tricky to be honest. <laughs> Array numbers one. <laughs> so that will create a new array of 13 elements, which is a bit exotic. Mm. But then once we have the array of 13 elements, we can get the keys, which is a new thing in JavaScript. Uh, keys in plural, right? So if we get the keys, that will give us an array-like object. So I, I find this a bit confusing, right? Mm -hmm. I think with the REST operator, we can blah, 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 mm -hmm. this right? Uh, I think it's a sma slightly simpler way to do that. So I think definitely I agree on that. So we can do, uh, I don't want to explain that now, I'm sorry. I, I, actually, I'll do a board challenge about that because I, it's going to confuse you even more, right? So yeah, sorry about that. I, I don't want to, be, to get that uh, deep. But anyway, I think it's good. It's good to, to know that eventually there are different ways to, you know, to calculate or to create a race dynamically. Right, so, uh, yeah, and then what else? No, I, I pretty much everyone has used the, the formula, right? And again, as I say, that, that's perfectly fine. I have no, com no concerns about that. Because even though you have to type more, to me, this looks really readable compared to that, right? So again, what's more important, readability or modern? You know, or it's also going to be more expensive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so, so Mega's one will be more computation efficient. No, it won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. That would probably be less efficient. That's true. I think it's we're creating an array of 12, 13 elements. There will be no difference, right? right. If at some point we're creating an array of 13 million elements, yeah. that may affect, right? Yeah. But at this scale, it doesn't matter. No, no, don't get me wrong. The thing is, readability is also a relative thing, right? Because if, if I say this is not readable, a senior developer may tell me you are bullshit, right? Because you should be able to understand that. Right? So it, it depends. Yeah. It depends on the people you are working with, right? For some people, that's absolutely readable, and that's fantastic. And this is the best solution without hesitation, right? But if you are working with people that they don't understand that, then that's a support, right? So generally speaking, the only thing that I agree is that we shouldn't copy anything from the internet. Because if we copy something from the internet, we don't really know what's, what, what are the side effects, right? If something doesn't work fine, we are unable to fine tune this algorithm because we copy it from somewhere else, right? <laughs> Anything else, guys? No? Okay, so let's do question three. We've got 30 minutes. So question number three says, remove number props. Oh, interesting. I think most of you have failed in this question, right? I mean, if I look at uh, what you did, look, only Itamar solved it. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I didn't solve it. I didn't see what Itamar did, right? Let's solve it. So, do you understand the question, first of all? So we have an object, right, with some properties, key values, name, form, blah, blah, blah. So we want to strip the non-string values. In other words, if the value is a string, then keep it. If the value is not a string, this is a number, then, you know, eject it, get rid of it, right? So why we keep Marlon Brando? Because it's the only property which is a string, right? In here, we got the first name and Grand Slam count, but not the age, because the age is a number, right? And here, nothing, right? Because we don't have any object, right? With, uh, we don't have any value with, num with the strings. It's all n about numbers. Does it make sense, the question? It's about tricky, right? So in this particular case, I intended to use reduce. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Yeah. So first of all, how many arguments? One. One. Tell me, argument name. Object. Object. Can anyone think of a better name here? Remove now. Per who said person? Act Why actual. person? Oh. Because it's the name and, and the details of the person. Yes, yeah. guys, please look at the description, right? Something that helps. We receive a person object, right? So if you put here person, 
that proves that you read the documentation. Right? If you put here animal, <laughs> probably you, you don't care about the semantics, right? So I think I'm person details. Person details, that's so fine. Like person you think it might be a name. That's the name. That's alright. Person details, not a name. Right. So now. So we have an object. Uh, you see, it's not that complicated, right? But you need to, to point to the right direction. Otherwise, it's, this is a pain in the ass. So, what I want to do is I want to uh, check its individual value on the object because I want to see if that value is a string or not. So, do you know how to get the values of an object? Object key. Ob yeah. Object. Values. Object dot keys or you dot values. So if I do object dot keys here, that will give me an array of two elements, name and board. Mm. If I do object dot values on this object, it will give me Marlon Brando and 1924. Yeah. Which one do we want? Keys. You can do both actually. We want. Yeah. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. That's correct. We want both, right? Yeah. We want both. That's correct. That's correct. Because we want both. The easiest thing to do is to point to the keys. Because if we access the key, then we can access the value easily. Mm -hmm. If we have the value, it's not that simple to access the key. Mm -hmm. right? We'll oh, see that in a minute. Okay, okay. That's why I personally suggest to put here person details dot keys. Mm -hmm. right? So if we just run that, even though that's only incorrect, and we person details dot keys. Uh, Ah, uh, no, that's wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The syntax is absolutely wrong. That's not the way you access the keys, right? So the access the keys of an object. Correct, correct, correct. We need to do object, capital O, keys, and then the object we want to inspect. Person details, correct, correct. So if we try that, you see? You see? Name and more. If I put object dot values, it will give me the values. Th then you can iterate through type of, isn't it? Correct. That, that's the plan. That's the plan. Let's let's leave the keys. I uh, remove everything. Okay, here you go. A bit of keys. So then, because this is an array, I guess we agree this is an array already. Oops. Object dot keys. Because this is an array, we can iterate, right? So I'm going to do dot reduce, and we'll see in a minute why. So again, I'm going to create a structure. So first of all, what type of data do we want to return? Mm. No, wrong. Object. An object. You see, we want to return an object. So what will be the default value of the reviews? Here. Empty. An empty object, that's correct, Jonah. That's correct. Because we want to return an object, here's where we declare. Say, hey, I want to return an object for now, this is an empty object. Then, arguments. What's the first one? Accumulator. Accumulator agree. What's the second one? Uh, what? Uh, value. Value. If you use the key. Con key. Maybe key. Key. I like key. Because key helps me to understand that it comes from here. Object of keys. Yeah. That will return the keys. So here we'll have each individual key. Right? Mm -hmm. And now that's the tricky part. I may want to add the key and the value to the object if something happens, maybe, but we'll see. So if something, mm -hmm. right? And then before I forget, remember to return the accumulator. So it will be sent to the next iteration of the loop. So if what? What's the condition here? Type of. Type of. Type of what? Uh, Type of what? The value, right? Yeah. How do we access the value, Marlon Brando? Name. name. Where is name coming from? Oh, the person details. Person details. So object itself. Yeah. Then the top name. Dot name. No, Why dot name? Dot name will explicitly access a key, key called name, right? Dot key. Dot key. Mm. 
Hmm. No. Do we have any property called no, key? No. Mm -hmm. So that's wrong. Object. That's wrong. Object. Object dot key. Wrong. I think so. Type of you have to use something with the square brackets. Ah, that's interesting. Square brackets. That's very interesting. Okay. Guys, that's sure. part of beginner, eh? Objects. Review that training, please. How to access properties dynamically? Question number three, I believe, or four. Right? And then what do we put here, Asa? Why you say, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And how do we do that? That's correct, that's correct, that's correct. You see? That's it. It's type of person details, key, what? Number? Equals. No, capital. Space. You can leave capital space. Number. You can leave the space. If it's a string, if it's string. string. I want to check if it's a string or not. I agree on that. If it's a string, then what? What do we do here with the accumulator? Then return. Return, return the key. No, return the key. That's a bit exotic. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Guys, the accumulator is the object that will get populated with mm -hmm. all the string values. So we definitely, we don't want to return anything, we'll return something at the end. We need to do something with the accumulator. What? Pushing the accumulator? Mm. No. In that particular case, the key is name. Mm. And the value is Marlon Brando. So I want to take the accumulator and I want to add a new property to the accumulator called name. Mm -hmm. Right? And the value of the property name will be that. again that's correct that's correct that's correct okay. accumulator key so that will create accumulator dot name equals how do you check the value I want to put Marlon Brando here how do you put Marlon Brando here well, indeed, um, correct what dot no, um, name dot name, dot name. You ruin it at the end, eh? Yeah, Why not name? Yeah. Why suddenly you are hard coding name properly? Where is name coming from? We don't have any name here. Yeah, key. Key, dot key. Square braces. Square, Square braces, that's correct. That's the same thing again and again and again. So, if the value is a string, then please create a new property called name, first name, last name, whatever. And then the value will be whatever the value of the original object is. Right? And eventually we'll return the object. Let's see if that makes any sense. It, it does make sense. Right? So, question for you. Let's add the classic iterator journey. Right? So, let me put the object here name Marlon Brando and then board 1924. Let's do that. So then, you tell me guys, what do we have on the, uh, let me see, yeah, so, iteration one, accumulator, what's the value of the accumulator? Empty, Zero. Empty object, that's correct. What's the value of the key? Name. That's correct. That's correct. Iteration two. So then we return. What do we return here? We return that, right? Because the the key, the value of that key is a string. So this line, this line will run, and consequently, that iteration here will going to return the new accumulator that will have the property name and the value Marlon Brando, right? Mm -hmm. Iteration 2, what's the value of the accumulator? Marlon Brando. Correct. What's the value of the key? Oh, so what's the key here? Uh, board. Board. board, correct. What do we return after the second iteration? Both lines. Both lines. This one's? No, both lines. Mm -hmm. 
the, no. the, same, the same thing. The same. Thing. Why the same thing? Do you think not? Sorry, someone in the. I want to make here. There is someone that if it was rich or. Uh, Bala. Someone said something on the other side of the line. Yeah. You said we're into a string. You were telling the equivalent. What the equivalent? Because it's not a top of string. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear you well. Can you say it again, please? Correct, that's correct, that's correct. So, he's correct. Because now the value of born is 1924, yeah. that is not a string, so we are not modifying the accumulator. Did that line will not run on the second iteration. So what are we returning? The same thing, right? We are not adding anything else. What happened on iteration number three? There is no addition number three, that's correct. That's it, right? Yeah. Let's have two properties. I mean, yeah. right? So that's pretty much it. This is a good example of why reduce is so powerful. Right? So with reduce, we have the list of keys, and then we take the value of these keys is a string. If it's a string, we just build the accumulator, right? Yeah. After this iteration. Does it make sense? Yeah. Any question? No? No, no elegance is used. So let's quickly check what you did here. Uh, yeah, lots of things. So obviously that's wrong, right? So this is the, the type of thing we should never do, right? Because here we are hard coding the value, right? But what happened if we have a new property called height or you know what, any other number, right? Yeah, it won't work. It's not not strong enough, right? So yeah. So we should definitely avoid pointing to any particular property of the object, right? We should avoid doing these things. We should keep it as much generic as possible. Look, in this code, I don't need, I have no idea how many properties do we have. I have no idea what the name of the property is. I have no idea. Everything is dynamic, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, we've got 15 minutes, so probably time for one more question. So look, question number four. Oh, so more will like this one. Sure, right. So this is about chain function, right? So we have a function that returns another function that returns another function. So we have three nested functions, right? In terms of coding, it's very, very simple, but in terms of you know thinking, it may be a bit mind blowing, right? Like inception, you need to go deep and deep and deep, and then go back, back, back right? It's a bit, you know. So first of all, how many arguments do we receive? One. One. Okay, what's the name of the argument? Number. What are going to call it? Number. Numbers or number? Number. 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 It's one okay. number, right? Three. Great. And then, what the function returns? A string, a number, a function, an array, an object? It's a function. It has a number. A, number fun a function, correct. Number one. Number, okay, then let's rename it to number one. Number. And then this is number two. And then what the second function returns? No. Another function, you are all right. Name of the argument? Number three. Number three. And then what the. And another one. Every, no, 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 no. Every time. Every time the expression. Yes. Why, 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 yes? Why don't we have another one? Correct. We have one, two, three. One, two, three. Right? So what do we return here? Number one, Yeah? Number one, multiply, number two, multiply, number three. Yeah. Yeah? That's and that's it. it. Yeah. Easy, right? Yeah. Cool. Let's see if it works. And it doesn't show. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Good. Why? Cool. Where? Everywhere. 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 Everywhere, right? Exactly. Exactly. Return. Remember, guys, every time you have a return statement, remember to add a semicolon at the end, right? And that works perfect. But now I have a question for you. Can we do the same thing using arrow functions, ES6 plus? Return? Number two? Two brackets? No, no, I mean, not two brackets, I mean, parentheses. Parentheses? Number two. Number two? Number three. Empty brackets. 
Then number three. Number three. Empty balance. And then what? Yeah. Wait. Um, Wait. Arrow. Arrow. Number one. Two, three. Wait, can you write down this doesn't look right, right? No, there's something weird here, right? What's wrong here? Do you know when a friend offers you a drink and he tells you this is whiskey and you smell it, doesn't smell like whiskey? So that's the same thing, the same thing, right? Looks like whiskey, but that's not whiskey, right? So that's not correct. That's not correct. Let me do it. Let me do it from the beginning. So to solve that. The first thing we did here is return a function. So this is just a function, right? So number two, we don't even need the parentheses, but you know, well, well, we we'll get rid of them afterwards. So number two, that's another function. So what does number two returns? Number three. Number three. Number three. Correct. And what does number three return? Number, number, number one. Multiplied. Correct. Number one. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah. You see? We don't even need a parenthesis. Look. No what? Yeah? Why not? I mean let's try that, right? Boom. Oh. Yeah. What? That is deep. Yeah? You see? Yeah. So number two returns a function. That function returns number one multiplied by number two multiplied by number three. If you find this a bit stressful, mm. feel free to add, for example, parentheses, right? Mm. This is easier to read, because yeah. now we say that uh, number two is a function, mm. and the function returns all these things, right? And then we got number three. So number three returns all these things, right? Mm. So remember, parentheses doesn't hurt. Mm. If it works without parentheses, it will work with parentheses. And parentheses just help to make your code more readable, sometimes, right? Again, readability is a personal thing. But so, any question? No? So let's see what you did. Change sequence. So, yeah, classic functions, change functions, you see. Everyone did pretty much the same thing. Um, so, for example, something I like about Mo and not that much about Acel and Nithamar is look at the naming conventions. Nan1, Nan2, Nan3. Right? But then, Aisel and Itamar, number, num b, <laughs> num? <laughs> Feels a bit random, right? Aisel? <laughs> you agree on that? Aisel was capital B at the end of the law. <laughs> capital B, yeah. <laughs> right. This is a bit, you know, predictable. Because if I had need to add another one, if I need to extend another, another, another nested function, I'd easily call it num4. But here, how, how do you call it? The next one. I have no idea, right? <laughs> NQ. You. You, are, you are just removing characters on the right, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and item are pretty much the same thing, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, so. Cool, all these things. Um, right, so we got eight min nine minutes. So do you want to do the last one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo. Woo. Right, so that's, that's, it's not that complicated. I just have nine minutes, so no pressure at all. So we have a function and we want to find, uh, we have a list of movies and on each movie we have a list of scores from different media, bl blogs, you know, newspaper, whatever, right? And we want to get the average score of each movie. So first of all, how many arguments? One. One, tell me, argument name. Movie. movie. Singular? Movies. movies. We have a list of movies, right? Movies, correct, correct. So, essentially, it's not that complicated. Look, do you remember in JavaScript, this is very important, and we'll do a workshop about that. If you have an array, we have an array, right? We agree on that. And we want another array which is similar, but something changes. How do we transform an array into another array of the same size? Map. Map. Thank you, Yonan. That's correct. It's map. We can do movies, not map. So then argument name. Movie. movie, yes. So then for each movie, so I essentially movie, that's the, that's the first movie, right? Mm -hmm. I want to transform that 
into that. So, let's return something. I'm going to return an object because I have an object, movies an object, and I want to return another object. So first of all, name. How do we access the name of the movie? Movies.movie.name. Movies movie movie like that? That doesn't make sense, right? Movies is an array. Here you are now assuming it's an object. No. Simply, movie.name, correct. Right? So we have a movie, which is an object. So that's our first movie. Mm -hmm. We just want to copy the name, right? Because the name won't change. The same name, right? Let's copy it. And then, now the tricky one. Score. To get the score, correct, we have movies.scores. Movie.scores. We got that, right? Yeah. But if we try that, first of all, why it doesn't work? Nothing works. Get worst recent movies not defined. Like, what? What the hell? This is because these kind of things start happening on the intermediate, right? So the function that we're invoking is called get worst recent movie, but then here, the name of the function is different, yeah. That's, yeah. right? That's why the function is never invoked. So you should rename it. Intermediate is about paying attention to details, right? Right. Now missing semicolon, but apart from that, apart from the elegance issues, now the problem is, look, it looks correct, eh? Look, 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 we have an array, name, that looks good, but suddenly, score is an array. We don't want an array. We just want the, I think it's the average, right? right. It's probably described here. I'm going to normalize that weight in the respect of the average. Correct, correct, correct. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a new function. This is something that, for example, Jaff likes to do, and in this particular case, it will definitely help. I'm going to create a function called getAverage. So, it will receive a list of values, and then it will return the average. Mm -hmm. How do we calculate the average of a list of values? Well, I invite you. Oh. Mark round. Mark reduce. round, wrong. Reduce, reduce. Correct. With math round, we can get the closest integer. But we don't have an integer. We have a list of integers. We want to get the average. So with reduce, we can do values dot reduce. And then first argument. Value. Value, wrong. Uh, accumulator. 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 Second value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second argument. Value. Value. value, correct, and then what? Return. Return. Ace, accumulate plus value. Accumulate plus value. Hmm, interesting. Will this give us the average? No, oh. no. you have to do further. Like okay, so you want, to, you want to create a variable called total, mm. and then return total divided by? Value dot length. Correct. 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 That will give us the average. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll show you how to simplify that in a minute. Yeah, isn't there a, isn't there a code that we just sum it? No. Mm -hmm. no. 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 Too optimistic. Maybe in 10 years. <laughs> All right. So we got that. So now we already have a function that gives us the average. <laughs> how do we invoke it here? We just, we just call the function. Yes. Yeah. What do we call the function? Uh, so on scores. Uh, yes. Yeah? We put the function there. That's correct. Look. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right? That's correct. Boom. Oh, right? So why this is so beautiful? Because even though the logic is a bit complicated, we managed to divide it. So we have a main function to create the object, and then we have a, a utility function to just literally get the average. The good thing about that function is, look, there are no references about scores or whatever. It's just numbers, right? So that means that we could be used that function somewhere else to calculate the average salary, for example, right? Why not? Right? And then, question for you guys, because we have just three minutes. Does anyone know how to solve the problem like that? I don't want to create the variable. I want to calculate with magic here. Device of where? Here? Yeah. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Brace. Brace. What's 
In reality, I'll tell you what you are trying to do. Mm -hmm. So if you have one, three, and five, what's the average here? Three, three easy, right? So what we what we did before is total, oops, total equals, what's the total? Nine, right? Mm -hmm. And then we divided, return nine divided by three. That's why it works, right? But in reality, in reality, that's the same as doing 1 divided by 3 plus 3 divided by 3 plus 5 divided by 3. Oh, so you can have a very sexy algorithm that will solve it in line. So you can do that. But be careful because that won't work. You need the app as well. You need what? We need a return. We have the return standing here. Remove the return. No, no. If we remove the return, nothing will get returned. Right? No, no. We, we, we definitely need the return statement. That won't work. Look. It will look like it works. It got submitted time out. But it won't work. Why it doesn't work? Probably no one knows yet. First accumulator. Oh. Oh. Okay. Because I think this is a very important exercise. Next board challenge which, which will be ready today before the end of the day and will be reviewed on Thursday uh, we'll talk about that particular issue right so I will ask you to determine why this didn't that didn't work right apart from that we went out of time we went to complete it and to end more or less so any question no Bala Richard no okay Cool, so that was it guys. Thank you for participating.